first off, I want to say hi to everyone. Thank you again for being here today with us. And uh, you know, we're, we're going to be uh, we're still in uh, we're still going to be talking about uh, we're still going to talk about Revelations. You know, I'm, we're going to go with uh, chapter four today. It's uh, John's John's vision of God's throne, and uh, I'm also going to try to get chapter five in. Prim primarily because they kind of go together, and they really need to they really need to be taught together. Uh, and, and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, try try to get all that pulled in. And uh, so let's go ahead and let's get going. After after this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, "Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be here hereafter." And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat, he that sat was to look upon like jasper and a sardin stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast was like a calf, the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. The four, and the four beasts, each of them had six, each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, Holy, Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor, thanks to him that sat on the throne, who, who liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders fall down before him and sit on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor, power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure thou art and were created. All right, now I'd like for all of y'all to get your Bibles, because what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to go through, and I'm going to try to go verse by verse, and try to break it down the best I can. Uh, well, you know, it's going to be to the point, and... Uh, uh, I think that's the best way to do it. You know, you know, we're gonna get right to the point. So, verse one. So John has looked above him, and and a door had appeared and opening, opening in heaven. He then heard a voice like a trumpet, as he said in the, in the verse, commanding him to come up and show him some things that will happen in the future. So. He's talking about this door that 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 is open. He's 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 heard a voice. Uh, probably no different than probably the voice he heard uh, on Patmos. We talked about that last time. And uh, he was asked to look up into heaven. And he was going to be able to see some things that no one else has ever saw. And that was going to be, you know, must be hereafter. In other words, it's going to be from now on. I mean, everything is covered in that, in that one word. Uh, verse 2. Uh, and then John recounts, he felt like his soul had left his body. That's what he was talking about, and immediately I was in the spirit. And, uh, and, and, and was taken up in heaven. He then sees a throne with someone sitting on it. Okay. Uh, so he's looking up into heaven, and in front of, in front of his face, you've got to understand, there are all these verses, they go together, so... All these things, John is seeing all of this stuff probably at the same time. But this particular verse is concentrating on the throne and he that sits on the throne. Uh, now verse 3 says, He said that the one sitting on the peered like, uh, peered like silver precious stone, jaspers, and sardine. He also described the throne as being encircled by a rainbow that that uh, that. Uh, that reminded him of 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 a of a red emerald. So, all of these things they all tie together. Let me tell you, talk a little bit about the jasper and the sardine stone, and also the emerald. Now, you got to understand this particular person sitting on the throne uh, represents probably represents a high priest, 
And I really do think that uh, what he was saying was what he, he was seeing. He was seeing the breastplate. And I really do think that uh, that uh, it was brought, brought to his attention about the breastplate. Now, the thing about uh, the Jasper and the Sardin, we need to understand, you know, there Jesus has Jesus has two natures. Uh, and I really do think that these that these uh, stones represent uh, his divinity, and they also are going to represent his blood atonement as well. Uh, like I said, all, all all of this is speculative, so you know this is this is just how I'm seeing it. Uh, verse four says, and around the throne also he saw four and twenty uh, uh, seats, and saw four and twenty elders sitting on on them clothed in white. So he is seeing four. He is seeing four and twenty uh, elders. In other words, twenty-four. And I, I believe that those elders re that we're talking about uh, represents the twelve disciples, and it also represents the twelve tribes of Israel. Uh, it says they were clothed in white. Uh, white means purity. Uh, it also, it also seemed that they were being exalted as well, the exalted saints. Uh, you know, they also had, the, like I said, they had the gold crown on their head. And, uh, these were, this is a spiritual crown. Uh, so I, that's why I really do think that these, 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 these people represented, you know, the 12 disciples in the 12 tribes. All right, check verse 5. John John said he heard more sounds like thunder and lightning and many voices out of the throne. He also said seven fire lamps burning in front of the throne. They most likely represent the seven spirits of the Lord. Uh, those uh, voices that he heard that sound like lightnings and thunders uh, could have, you know, represented uh, the heavenly host. Uh, it also, you know, we need to, when, we, when we're talking about chapter four, or we, need to, we need to envision we need to envision the tabernacle, if you if you will, because this is kind of what uh, this 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 could be referring to. Like I said, it's speculative, uh, and you know what I'm thinking he's seeing is he's getting all like I said, all this stuff is in front of his face, and he's he's seeing all this all at one time. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to take each element, or each element that he sees, he's trying to explain each each one of those elements as he's going through uh, this particular chapter. And all right, now let's go on to six. Uh, he notices a great ocean, which which looked like a like glass. So it was very clear. Uh, and it, you know, and it surrounded the throne completely. The throne was in the midst of it. Uh, There's also the four beasts were there, and uh, of course the twenty. You know, the the elders were also probably sitting around it. There's no doubt in my mind of this. And you know the uh, uh, it says it's, it was it was clear it's just the the sea of glass like a to crystal and to me that to, that represents you know uh, purity it represents uh, it represents God's glory it represents so many different things that that you can look at uh, because you know as a Christian man when I first you know before I got saved uh, I was mucky. I mean, I was, I was like muddy water, basically. And I really do think that since I was saved, and this is kind of where I, I, I'm leaning towards, just think about this. Put, this. put yourself here for a moment. And let's think about this for just a second. It says, now, now the glass, of, now it appears like glass, and like unto crystal. So in other words, because of my salvation, all that muck and stuff that is inside my my body, my heart is is gone now. Yeah, that, that's why I really do think that it represents God's glory greatly. Uh, all right, let's go on to the next chapter. All right, this is the, I mean, excuse me, next verse be chapter be verse seven. All right, now in this particular verse, John is describing the four beasts. Now, let me kind of explain to this. Uh, now, like I said, this is speculative, but this is this is what this is what I feel it, it, it actually represents. Uh, these are, to me, they're the four faces of Jesus, basically. So you got the lion-like, 
all right, which is represents the tribe of Judah. Then we got the calf-like face, his sacrifice. If y'all remember back in the Old Testament, uh, sa sacrifices had to be made in order to, uh, to uh, you know, to to take care of your sins and remove your sins. So Jesus' sacrifice in this particular instance uh, is kind of it's what that is, represents. It represents his sacrifice, the man face, the man light. That's his humanity. Those are things that, you know, you got to realize Jesus was God. He was completely God, totally God. But he came to heaven as a man. He came from heaven to earth as a man. He did that because he wanted to understand the, the Jewish people, our, us, people in this world. He wanted to understand them better. So he, you know, for his, uh, this, this is something he just really wanted to, wanted to do. So that represents his humanity, the man like the eagle. That's his majesty and glory. You know, just like with the eagle, you know, in, in the United States, uh, the bald eagle to us is, is, is a huge, is a wonderful representation of our country. It's a, it's our country's bird. It is something that we are proud of. It's a beautiful, it's a, it's a majestic, it's a beautiful animal. So I really do think that uh, that's how, that's why I feel that, you know, that, that would represent his majesty and his glory. Verse 8. It said that he's talking about the cherubim. Now, this is what those four beasts were. They were cherubim. They each had six wings and many eyes. And also said they never rested. So they were constantly praising God, saying, Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. You know, our Lord needs to be praised. He wants to be praised. And these cherubim, represent that praise. They represent that, you know, that's not everything they do. Don't misunderstand me. But that is something that they uh, are there for. That is what their job is. Verse 9. They glorified and honored and thanked him who, who sat on the throne and lived forever. All right, they were honoring God. They were thanking God. Uh, you know, these, these are all things that kind of correlate within this verse. Uh, then verse 10, the four and 20 elders fall down before him. Uh, they sat on the throne. They, they fell before him. They sat on the throne and worshiped him who lives forever and cast their crowns before the throne you know, we, as Christians, we all have, because we're saved individuals, we have, we're going to receive a crown of righteousness. To me, within that crown, because of this crown of righteousness, you know, we, we are not going to keep this crown. This crown is going to be given back to Jesus because he deserves it more than we do, really. And... So this is kind of a picture of the worshipers. These are the people that are that are that are uh, giving reverence to God. This is this is these. It's it's all of our humility. It's all this stuff that is tied into verse ten. In the last verse, thou art worthy, O Lord, to revive. Uh, Though for the created all, let me, let me read this. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So, in other words, uh, he is worthy of our praise. He, we were created for his pleasure, and we were created for his glory and for his honor, and to represent him on this earth. Uh, we need to really look at things uh, and to be serious about our walk, our Christian walk, because we represent God. Uh, our, our actions and these things that we do represent Him. 
We need to honor him and allow the mankind, the people that may not know him, to see Jesus through us. Now, of course, we aren't Jesus, naturally. We have all have faults. But we are supposed to do our very best. We are supposed to do our very best to try to uh, represent him the best we can. So, with this particular book, remember these are this this particular vision that John is having. It's like a dream. It's basically it's, it's, it's like a dream. So you got all these things that are that are are there. And like I said, the four be, the the four beasts and the 20, 24 elders uh, represent a huge uh, part of this chapter. Uh, these people, you know, these are, you know, like I said, the beasts, they all represent Christ. Then the, 20, the 24 elders, they represent the disciples and the 12 tribes of Judah. Something else y'all need to understand that, and let's don't forget this, the book of Revelations was written for Jewish people, really. Uh, we... Uh, honestly, folks, before all this stuff gets gets crazy, we're gonna be out of here. Uh, but this is this is something that was written for them, and uh, so we need to we need to understand that. Now, this next book, the Seven Seals. Now, this is interesting. This is interesting. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do these. I'm gonna do this. Try to do this uh, verse by verse. I think it would be better to explain it. Uh, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. A book written within and on the back side, Seal of Seven Seals. Now let's think about that for just a minute. Uh, if y'all remember back in, uh, back in our New Testament, when we were, you know, when Jesus had been crucified, Jesus had been crucified and he, uh, uh, he appeared to uh, the disciples. Remember when he appeared to the disciples? And he said, he said, don't touch me. Uh, did that with Mary Magdalene? He said, he, he said, don't touch me. He said he has not yet ascended to his father. Uh, do you want, yeah, I don't know if y'all remember, this is what correlates, this is what was really interesting when I got into this. It says, and he saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Okay, in the right hand is where this book is at. Now, where did Jesus say he was going to be at? He said he was going to be on the right hand of his father. So, you sit there, you think about that for a minute. This just kind of ties all that together, really. When you said you think about it, and uh, I mean, it just it just it just touched my heart. I mean, it really did. When I read that, I was I said, "Whoa," you know, because you know you, you I've always said this, and we say this. There's not a lie in the Word of God. Everything from the Book of Genesis all the way to the end of Revelations goes together somehow, some way. As we get into this chapter, get a little bit further along in this chapter, we'll start seeing some other things. I'm going to start tying some other stuff in with it that I think we're all going to, going to, going to understand. All right, verse 2. And, and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And let me go, I'm going to go ahead and read three with this too. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look therein. So let's go with the first part there real quick. Verse two. Uh, it says there's an angel proclaiming this. If we look back into the Old Testament, back into the book of Daniel, the angel Gabriel appeared to Daniel. He told him about the end of time. Also, it was the angel of Gabriel that appeared to Mary, and according to what Scripture says, and said that she was going to give birth to Jesus. So in my mind, I think this strong angel that is proclaiming this is more than likely Gabriel. Because Gabriel was, Gabriel is like, he's like God's messenger. And I really do think that he, he was probably the one that was that was doing this, but that's just me. Y'all may think something different, and that's okay. But I, I, I thought that I just thought that was an interesting point. In verse, and then verse three says, "And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look therein." 
So no one, the old devil himself wasn't able to open the book. No one can open this book. And so it's kind of so it's so it's kind of mysterious, isn't it? We don't really know what is within or why this is why this is like it is. But the seven seals, the seals that we're going to be talking about later on in this lesson, starting in chapter six, which will be down the line. We're going to start opening these seals, and we're going to start being able to break those down. That's when we also meet the four horsemen. We'll meet the four horsemen and talk about them a little bit. So all of this stuff is, is, is for that. And not just like just like we heard in the past, you know, Jesus said this. Nobody knows when the end of the world is coming. The only person that knew when the end of the world is coming is God himself. Jesus said, I don't even know it. So this is what this is what is going on at this point. Remember, it is not time yet for this book to be opened. It's coming, but it's not time for it to be opened. So no one else needs to know what's going on inside. All right. And I wept. This is John, this is John now. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book. Need to look therein. John wept. He was, he was, he was eager to, to, to see what was going on. He was eager to, to see what was in this book. But you know that it was really a, a needless fear. He didn't really need to fear that. So let's go on to chat. Let's go on to verse 5 now. This is where he gets his answer. And one of the elders saith unto him, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So look at there. So what that is, what that is saying is we know this book is in the right hand uh, of the person that's sitting on the throne, which is God. And we know that uh, Jesus had two names, which was written, which was just two of his names, uh, the line of the tribe of Judah and the root of David. These are all things that we refer to Jesus as one of, as one of the names we, we, would, we have given Jesus. So this is, this is what, this is what, so Jesus is the one and it's the only one that can open this book. Let's go on to the next one. And, beheld, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of a throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which were the seven spirits of God, that God sent forth into the earth. Now, the thing about this that's really interesting to me is this lamb suddenly appears that had been slain. Was not Jesus called the lamb of God? Was Jesus not slain or died on a cross? Jesus died on a cross, sacrificed his life. Remember we talked, we mentioned that in the four beasts. Sacrificed his life for everybody. Not just me. Everyone. Everyone. Even the Jewish people. But they rejected him, right? So that's why this book is really written for them. Okay? So, but with that being said, the seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth on the earth, all right, so here's what I see as the seven spirits. The spirit of the Lord, wisdom, understanding, counsel, his might, his strength, knowledge, and fear of the Lord. Also need to understand that the number seven in the word of God means perfection. It means complete. And this is what this particular verse is representing. His completeness. His, you know, his perfection. These are all things that, that uh, through his wisdom and all these things that he, that, that, that indwells within him. All right, let's go on to the next one, chapter 7. I mean, verse 7, excuse me. I keep saying chapter when I mean verse. Good night. All right. 
And he came and took the book. Listen to this. This is what Jesus done. This is what this lamb, lamb did that, that was represented in six. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. That's why I said Jesus was, when Jesus went to heaven, he went to, he went to God's right hand. He was on the right side of God. He was able to grab hold of that book. He didn't have to do He didn't have to move far. He was able to do it right then. And uh, so, you know, that's what he did. He's the interpreter. He's the interpreter of what this book is going to acknowledge, which we'll get into that on later on. Verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. So here we go, we've got, we've got the beast and we've got the, uh, 24 elders. I mean, they went down and bowed, bowed, in front of, bowed in front of God after he took this book. They worshiped him right there and then. They, and it says every one of them had a hearts and golden vials full of odors. So the harp, the harps represent, you know, I, I really don't know what they represent, so I'm going to move on from that. But the harps were, were are, are just as part of this verse, and the golden vials full of odors. Now, they represent uh, uh, incense and all this stuff. It's what the, the vials represent, and full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints, which that represents the prayers. So... Let's go on to the next one, which would be chapter, which would be verse nine. All right, and they sung a new song, saying, "Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and every nation." So they're singing a new song now. They're singing a song that uh, praises God. This is this is. It symbolizes their joy that he was able to open this book. And, uh, also, we get to talking about uh, he was. He says, "For thou was slain." In other words, his death and his redeeming power because of his death. The blood of the blood of Christ, which gives which which we are covered in once we're saved. And it also says in tongue. And people and nations, every kindred. So what that means is, that, like I said earlier, it's everyone. It doesn't make any difference who you are, where you're from, what color your skin is. It makes no difference. Christ died for everybody. Verse ten, and has made us unto our gods kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. Yeah, folks. When Jesus finally comes back to earth, you know, we've, we, we've already been raptured out of here by then. We're gone already. But this verse says that he has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. We're going to reign with him in the new earth. That we're going to cover it way on later down towards the end of the towards the end of Revelation. We're also are exalted. We're also going to be, you know. It just, you know, when you sit there and you throw all this stuff together, man, it just it just blows your mind. But think about that. Christ cared so much for us that He was willing to die on a cross to save us. And I don't understand why people have such a hard time grasping that. You know, I just had my own spiritual birthday. 42 years now I've been saved. As of September 17th, this very past week. And you know what? Past two days I've been really thinking about that. Where would I be? I have no clue because as the people of this church have heard my testimony they know what happened 
Maybe one of these days I'll get my testimony for everybody else to view. Maybe I do that. I don't know yet. But you know, if I had stayed down that same path, I would definitely not be here. I would definitely not be able to sit here and go through the book of Revelations and try to teach it the best I can. I'm not doing this just for me. I'm doing it for God, too. I'm doing it for you. This is why I'm doing it. I want him glorified, not myself. This is not about me. This is all about him. And we need to understand that. Let's go on to Lebanon. I know I had a, I got kind of on a, I, I know I got on a soapbox there. I apologize. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Infinite, infinite voices he had heard. The heavenly host was praising the Lamb at this time. And someday, folks, we're going to be there too. And we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be praising God every day. Brother Dusty has his thing. He's, he's looking forward to getting, being able to go fish, fishing in the Crystal Lake because he said he ain't ever caught a fish that's worth eating of anything. He said he's a guy big enough there. He knows he does. And he's probably right. You know, and there's going to be so many things that, you know, I told y'all my hips don't work right been waiting to try to get this other surgery done and they just don't know what to do. I don't know what's going to happen. But you know what? If it never happens, I am going to be able to when I get up to heaven. It ain't going to matter no way. Hips ain't going to matter. These old wrists ain't going to matter. They're shot. Shoulders are shot. But it ain't going to matter no more. Because I'm going to have a new body. I'm going to be clothed in that white robe. Just like the saints. Just like the 24 elders were. We're going to have that white robe. We're going to be going. We're going to be riding on that horse. When we coming down. When Jesus comes back. We're going to be back behind him. He's going to be down there. He's going to be whipping the old devil. It's all over the place. That's something to look forward to people. It doesn't have to be. Life does not have to be bad. But what you need to do in order for this to work right is you, have, you really need to accept Jesus. That is where that hope comes from. Because you'll know then that it's all going to end someday. Verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Praising God. Receiving this power that he's going to, he, that, he, that he has been given to open that book. All these things that we take for granted, you know, is going to come to fruition when we get to heaven. And we're going to be able to see this. The worthiness of our Lord. Be able to praise Him. Exalt Him. Glorify Him. I'm looking forward to it. 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, such as are in the sea and all that are them, heard I say in blessing and honor and glory and power be unto Him that set up the own throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Huh. That tells me old devil's even gonna have to worship him. He ain't gonna like that too much. Because it says every creature, which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every man, every woman. 
those that are in the sea, everywhere, all going to have to worship Jesus someday. And I tell you what, that is exciting in itself to know that the old devil can't do a conflicting thing about it either. His rebellion will end someday. Chapter, and then verse 14. And the four B said, Amen. The four and twenty others fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. The four B said, Amen. They represent Jesus. And the four and twenty others fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And that liveth forever and ever. Shows his eternity. And how we are going to be witnessing that someday. I really do like the way this particular chapter ended. Not only did he get worshipped, he also got an amen. And you ask me, amen at the end of any service, no matter what, it's closure. Any phrase that our preacher may say or anything that I may say that amen really means something. It's not just a word. It means something. So with that being said, uh, you know, next week we'll be, or next time we'll be getting into, we're going to start opening up the six seals. I meant to describe the book a little bit different to where the seals were located. I did forget that. Let me go back and do that, then I will close out. It says, and I saw on the right hand the on throne a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. So in other words, here's this book, the Word of God. Take the Word of God, close it down. If that book was closed up, this is the front, right here. And on the back side, all the way around, these seven seals. Closed it up. Nobody was strong enough to open those seals but Jesus himself. The thing we need to understand also is like I said earlier that Jesus even said he didn't know where he didn't know when the world's gonna end. This is a beginning of that process, is what this is gonna be. So as we get into it and we get to talking about it, uh, chapter six will be next time. That's all we'll be covering. Uh, we're going to open up six of the five or six of the seals. Then chapter seven will be uh, we'll be talking about the Christian seal. In other words, our seal as Christians. And then the <clears throat> next chapter, chapter eight. We won't get to the opening up the seventh seal until then because that's, you know, folks, that's when it all kind of starts. We start getting everything starts kind of pulling together and moving forward. Uh, also with that, I'm going to say one more thing uh, to my class especially. I'm hoping you all are watching. I hope you're watching. But one of the people, I don't remember if I said this last time, but one of the people that we have uh, been praying for, Mr. Chip Montgomery passed away uh, really just days after I did my last lesson. Uh, and I uh, just want to let y'all know that and uh, to keep praying for the family. And uh, God bless every one of you. Thank y'all so much for watching. See you next time.